Hi, this is Spencer, founder of Synapse Trading, and today I'm going to talk about something that is very important in the current market climate. And this is a question that I've been getting a lot recently because of the market crash. And I think that it doesn't just apply to this market crash, but to all market crash in general. So the question I get is, you know, um, should I be holding on, you know, if I already have some stocks or, you know, products in my portfolio, should I hold on to what I have or should I cut loss and sell off you know, so that I can prevent further losses, right? So this is a question that I've been getting a lot. And in this video, I'm going to share with you my thought process on how you should be making that decision. And at the end, I will share with you two main pieces of advice on um, how I think you should tackle this question. So the first, uh, the first issue, right, um, cash out or hold. Right, so the first thing that you should think of is really what is your original portfolio strategy. Right, so most people, I think the reason they face this dilemma is because they did not have uh, an original portfolio strategy in the first place, which is why you know, when, they, uh, when they started building a portfolio, they just like, bought random bits and pieces of, you know, of stocks, a bit of stocks, a bit of ETF, a bit of gold, some bonds. And you know, with the assumption that you know, as long as the market goes up, you know, you're making money, and you know, uh, and they somehow they think that you know they'll be able to cash out uh, just before the market high, or they think that the market will never fall, right? So that is the general approach of most people. There's no like fixed portfolio strategy or allocation uh, in mind, All right? So the first thing I would advise you to you know is to really take this time to learn about like what portfolio strategies are and how you want to structure your portfolio in the long run right so for example um, portfolio strategies right there are like passive strategies and active strategies like say for example um, you know pa a passive strategy will be like dollar cost averaging where you know you just buy in a, a fixed amount of say ETFs in the market every month or you know, or every year, <clears throat> and regardless of whether the market is uh, moving up or down, <clears throat> and active strategies will be more like you know maybe um, trying to find like undervalued uh, stocks or undervalued ETFs, uh, you know, and buying in or or making your buying and selling decisions based on the market conditions or based on uh, technical analysis or fundamental analysis. Right, so this will be more of an active approach. Right, I say for most of people out there, a passive approach <clears throat> will probably be uh, much better because if they don't have time to monitor or the skill to you know, to shuffle the portfolio, right, then it actually makes sense to adopt a more passive strategy. For example, dollar cost averaging, like I mentioned, you know, or um, say having fixed weights. For example, like you know, maybe sixty percent equities, forty percent bonds. Um, you know, or maybe having a certain percentage of gold or certain products right, in a balanced portfolio and then rebalancing it out uh, you know, every year or so. Right, so that will be a, a, a more passive approach. Right, so Warren Buffett himself also recommends that for retail investors, they should stick to maybe a low cost ETF uh, and dollar cost average it in the long run. Right, so a lot of people originally, they might have had passive strategies like dollar cost averaging but you know, all of a sudden, once the market crash, right, they, they sort of forget that you know, they were planning the dollar cost average and suddenly they just want to like, cut loss you know, or to, to sell their portfolio. Right? So that is kind of strange because the point of having a, a passive strategy is you know, like dollar cost averaging is that you continue to buy in as the market drops right, at fixed intervals. So because you know, in the long run, if you look at like the past 100, 200 years, you see that generally the market eventually does uh, recover. Even you know, the 2008 crash right, or the 2000 crash, right, it did recover within like three to six years. So the idea is that if the market crash and you continue to buy at lower and lower levels, then you know, um, when it recovers, you will have covered back everything and you will have also been able to make a profit because you have bought in certain quantities at a lower price. Right? So that is the idea of dollar cost um, averaging. So I'm not sure why you know, some people, once the market starts crashing, they suddenly you know, decide to tr change their strategy. Right? So changing a strategy is probably one of the most dangerous things uh, that you can do, you know, um, as the market is crashing. <clears throat> now, um, with regards to whether, you know, if, if let's say now you did not have a strategy, right, and now, you know, you are trapped 
with say a certain quantity of uh, you know items in your portfolio and you are deciding whether to liquidate it or not right so let me let's try to look at it in terms of a trade-off right the upside versus the downside so for example now <clears throat> most markets say like the US market is down about 30 percent right so Historically, in the past 50 years or so, there have only been about five times where the market actually went below 30%. Uh, you know, and <clears throat> so if you look at it from this perspective, um, what is the upside versus the downside? Right? So when it did go below 30%, only maybe about two times it actually went further down to say 50% right, from the all-time high. So now we are at 30%, right? To, from 30%, if it drops all the way to 50%, there's a, like, an additional drop of maybe like 20%, right? Of course, you need to take into account that it's percentage, so it won't be exactly 20%. But the idea is that there's an, another, that the amount of drop, right, is not that much compared to what has already dropped, right? And the upside, when it recovers, right, if, if it drops 30%, it recovers, the, the recovery is probably going to be more, like 40 or 50%. Right. So when you are deciding whether you want to cash out, you, you're making the assumption that you can somehow get in at the bottom once it rebounds, right? or ne at least near the bottom. Right? So that is a very dangerous assumption because unless you are actively trading or you are a market professional, most of the time you will not be able to, catch, you know, to, to get back in near the bottom. Right? This means that you are running the risk of potentially missing out getting in right so the worst thing that can happen is that you sell out and before you can get in the market fully recovers right so you will have missed out all the potential upside so that's why i said it's a trade-off because you are trading off the potential uh, you know 40 50 percent gain right to minimize the losses from the additional 20 percent drop right so when you think about it you know the upside gain versus the downside loss Right. Is it really worth trying to time the market to cut your losses or is it, you know, try uh, or do you want to, you know, to, to get out of the market <coughs> right, just to avoid that small bit of loss? Right. Of course, if you're able to get out early, right, when the market dropped 10%, 20%, you know, then good for you. Right. But the thing is, you know, as the market drops more and more, Right, it makes less and less sense to cut loss because the further down, the, the, the amount of upside versus the downside changes as the market continues to fall. Right, so that is something that you have to consider. Okay, so, um, so let me come to the two pieces of advice that, um, that I can offer you. The first is that you should always stick to your cost portfolio strategy. Right? Don't try to change your strategy just because of the market conditions. Right? A portfolio strategy is something that you have that you know you that is supposed to last you for like 10, 20 years because that is the time holding period and time horizon of your long-term investment. So you should have a strategy that is going to tie you through the, the next 10 or 20 years. And you shouldn't be changing your strategy you know, based on the, the market co conditions or fluctuations because in that 10, 20 year time frame is very likely, it's, it's almost certain that you, know, you will go through one or two big major market crash, right? And that is the real test of your strategy, whether it can weather those uh, you know, market crash and continue to see you through the next 10 or 20 years, right? So make sure you're, when you are formulating your strategy, you should also take that into account. Okay, and the next uh, piece of advice, I think this is the probably the most important factor in deciding whether you should liquidate your portfolio or not, right? And that is uh, firstly, and that, and that is whether, you know, are you at this point of time adding to your portfolio or are you drawing out your portfolio, right? So what I mean is, you know, if, if say you are currently working, right, and you are in the early stage of your life where you're accumulating wealth, you are having a, a salary, and you know you are saving money, and every month or every year you are you know being you are able to add new uh, cash inflows into your portfolio, right? So this will be the stage where you are actively adding to your portfolio, right? So you shouldn't be too worried about the market dropping because at this point of or this stage of life, you are a net buyer of equities or assets, which means that you know the more the asset prices drop, the better for you because you can accumulate more and more at cheaper prices. 
right? In your later stage of life, right, after you have retired and you are no longer adding to your portfolio, or you know, then you are now withdrawing from your portfolio, then you will want asset prices to go up because you will be able to cash out all that you have accumulated in the earlier stage of your life at higher prices. So that is the general you know, uh, strategy that you should be uh, targeting, right? So if you are still earning and you are adding you know, to your portfolio, then you shouldn't be too worried about a, a crash because you should stick to your strategy and you should also take advantage of this crash to accumulate more assets, especially if the crash takes like you know three to six years to recover. That means that you have three to six years to accumulate assets at depressed prices, right? Which is actually good if you are a net buyer of assets. Okay, so that's all um, I have for this video, right? And I hope that at least now you have some idea on how to structure and strategize your portfolio. If you enjoy this video, uh, please do subscribe for our channel and uh, do check out our uh, website for a lot more trading guides and also do join our telegram channel for daily market updates right so that's all and i'll see you in the next video